Hi, I'm Jackson Willett with Newport Coast Maritime Academy. Today we're going to demonstrate how to pick up and drop a mooring at Catalina Island in Southern California. The vessel we're going to be training on is a 2020 Nevada 48, generously provided by our friends at CNET Yacht Sales here in Newport Beach. Picking up a mooring in Catalina is a two-person job, so joining me today is my friend and fellow instructor, Captain Bob Armstrong. Hi. So Bob, you ready to go to the island and pick up a mooring? I'm ready to go to the island. Let's do it. Let's go do it. The two most popular harbors on Catalina Island with moorings available to the public are Avalon Harbor and Isthmus Cove. Today's training is in Avalon Harbor, located near the eastern end of the island, approximately 26 nautical miles from Newport Beach. The harbor is patrolled by the City of Avalon Harbor Department, who assigns moorings on a first-come, first-served basis upon your arrival at the harbor entrance. As you approach the harbor, look for the patrol boat, usually on station at the harbor entrance. Slowly approach the patrol boat. Once you're a few boat lengths away, stop your vessel and wait for the officer to approach you. During the summer season, you may have to wait while other vessels that arrived before you complete their check-in. Because moorings are assigned on a first-come, first-served basis, the earlier you arrive, the better chance you have of getting a mooring. However, due to the high volume of visitors on holiday weekends in the summer, an early arrival does not guarantee a mooring assignment. When the patrol boat pulls alongside, you'll need to provide the following information. One, vessel documentation number, two, vessel length, and three, vessel name. Have this information ready prior to engaging with Harbor Patrol. Payment can be made with cash or credit card. Moorings in Avalon have a number stenciled on the upper part of the mooring can. After receiving your mooring assignment from the patrol officer, consult the mooring map to find your mooring. You can download a copy of the Avalon mooring map from our website at the address below. After locating your mooring, then locate the mooring on your row closest to the main channel. This is the mooring that marks where you will turn into the mooring field. During summer months, the entrance to the harbor can be congested with ferries, recreational traffic, and local sightseeing tours. Plan your mooring approach before you enter the harbor. So we've got our mooring assignment, but before we enter the harbor, let's walk through the process with this animated video from our friends at Novamar Insurance. A Catalina mooring is composed of five key elements. First is the mooring can, a blue and white metal buoy floating on the surface of the water. Second is the pickup pole, a four to five foot black antenna attached to a small buoy floating upright on the surface of the water. Third is the bow hawser, a thick yellow braided line with a large loop at the end suspended below the surface of the water by the pickup pole and attached to the sand line. The bow hawser is what secures the bow of the vessel to the mooring. Fourth is the stern hawser, another thick braided yellow line that lies on the seabed and is connected to the sand line. The stern hawser is what secures the stern of the vessel to the mooring. Fifth is the sand line which lies on the seabed and connects the bow and stern hawsers. The sand line is what crew uses to lift the stern hawser from the seabed to the stern of the vessel. When approaching the mooring ball, the captain maneuvers the bow of the vessel to within arm's reach of the pickup pole and maintains position, while crew secures the vessel's bow and stern to the mooring. The captain's ability to maintain vessel position is crucial to enable crew to successfully pick up the mooring. While the captain maintains position within arm's length of the pickup pole, crew lifts the pickup pole and the attached pickup line out of the water to gain access to the loop in the bow hawser line. After the pickup pole and pickup line have been lifted out of the water, crew reaches under any lifelines or bow rails to grab the loop of the bow hawser and places the loop of the bow hawser over the boat's bow cleat, thus securing the bow of the vessel to the mooring. Once the bow hawser is secured, crew locates the sand line attached approximately one to two feet below the loop of the bow hawser. While walking aft, crew pulls the sand line out of the water while dropping the retrieved slack back into the water. 
Once crew is approximately one-third of the distance to the stern, the captain should place engines in neutral to prevent fouling a prop with a mooring line. While continuing to walk aft to the stern, crew continues to pick up the sand line while dropping slack into the water. At this point, the captain can choose to leave the helm and assist crew. Upon arriving at the stern, crew pulls up the remaining sand line to lift the stern hauser off the seabed and to the surface. Crew places the loop of the stern hawser over the boat's stern cleat, thus securing the stern of the vessel to the mooring. The vessel is now secured, both bow and stern to the mooring, with the sand line returned to the water. So now that you've seen the mooring overview, let's go into the harbor and do this for real. Once captain and crew have agreed on a plan to approach the mooring, the captain pilots the vessel down the main channel. It's helpful to use a pair of binoculars to read the mooring numbers. Remember, the first mooring you're looking for is the one that marks the row where you will turn into the mooring field. Once you've identified the mooring to make your turn, proceed down the row to your assigned mooring. As you travel down the mooring row, crew can assist the captain by looking ahead for the assigned mooring. Moorings are sequentially numbered, which helps to anticipate where your mooring will be. Once you have your mooring in sight, turn the vessel and point your bow directly at the pickup pole. As you start moving towards the pole, be prepared to adjust your approach to compensate for wind and swell. Slowly approach the pickup pole. Once crew makes contact with the pole, stop the vessel and hold position while crew pulls the pole out of the water. Throughout the entire mooring process, it's important to keep your vessel lined up with the mooring and away from adjacent vessels. Crew pulls the pole out of the water to reach the bow hawser, a thick braided yellow line with a large loop at the end. Reaching under any lifelines or bow rails, crew attaches the loop of the bow hawser to the bow cleat. Once the bow hawser is secured, crew locates the sand line, which is attached to the hawser just below the loop. After taking hold of the sand line, crew faces aft and pulls up as much slack as possible while dropping what has been picked up back into the water. This can be a messy job, so dress appropriately and wear gloves to protect your hands. While continuing to pull up the sand line, crew walks aft towards the stern. At this point, the captain should no longer engage engines or thrusters for risk of fouling the sand line into the props. Crew continues to walk aft while picking up the sand line until they reach the stern. At this point, the captain can assist crew to pull up the rest of the sand line and bring the stern hawser to the surface. Once the stern hawser comes to the surface, secure it to the vessel's stern cleat. If you're unable to pull the hawser loop to the stern cleat, pull in as much sand line as possible and secure it to the stern cleat. With engines running and after a ready signal from the captain at the helm, crew removes the stern hawser from the stern cleat and releases it into the water. Crew visually observes the stern hawser sinking to the seabed and then moves to the bow. At the bow, crew drops the pickup pole into the water and then removes the bow hawser from the bow cleat and releases it into the water. Crew verifies the bow hawser has sunk beneath the surface of the water and signals to the captain the vessel is free of the mooring. The captain then pilots the boat out of the mooring field. Once the captain has started the engines and has control of the vessel, he signals crew to release the stern hawser. Remember to always release the stern first. Crew releases the stern hawser and watches it sink below the surface. Once the hawser has disappeared, Crew signals the captain the stern is clear. Once the captain hears the stern clear signal, the engines and thrusters can be used to maintain position while crew moves forward to remove the bow hawser. On the bow, crew drops the pickup pole into the water, removes the hawser from the cleat, and releases the hawser into the water, remembering to visually observe the hawser sink below the surface. Once the bow hawser and pickup pole are in the water, crew signals the captain that the vessel is clear. The captain then maneuvers away from the mooring and pilots the vessel out of the mooring field. Hi, my name is Orn Karstarf and I am the Avalon Harbor Master. If you're planning a trip out to Catalina this year, make sure you check in at the harbor entrance with our red and gray harbor patrol.
control boat. We'll be glad to assist you. We do monitor VHF radio, channel 12 and channel 16, and you can call ahead of time if you're worried about mooring availability for busy holiday weekends. Other than that, uh, if it's your first time here, just let us know it's your first time. We'll be glad to assist you with information and instruction to make sure that you get on a mooring without any problems. Uh, we're, like I say, we're looking forward to a great year. We look forward to your visit. We want to have your uh, business, so thank you very much. It's been a, my pleasure, and I look forward to seeing you.